all right before i must say no i know i'm gone for some time but i'm back so hi my dumplings i'm back again and today we're going to talk about a cannibal mm-hmm. we're gonna talk about people i eat people that we're gonna talk about today no like I normally do, we're gonna just jump right into the story. We're not wasting no time. But first, my father warning, 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 warning. Viewers' discussion is advice. So, Ise Sagawa. I say that right? Ise Sagawa? Is it Sagawa? Sagawa. So, Ise Sagawa. He was born April 26, 1949. Ise was born into a wealthy family. They were living in Japan, very traditional, but very loving. His father was very successful. He was a businessman. He was like the president of a water industry, and he made a lot of money, and he was doing very well. Also, he says grandfather, granddaddy, he was an editor for one of the major newspapers in Japan. And he says mother, she took care of the family, you know? She was a stay-at-home mom. The family was doing well financially. So money I fly here, there and everywhere. Like I said, the people them do broke, them rich. Mm -hmm. When Issa's mother was pregnant with him, she fell down a flight of stairs and she almost had a miscarriage. It was said that he was born prematurely and he was so small he could fit in the palm of his father's hand. He had a younger brother who was born two years after him. But they were very close and they almost raised them like they were twins. Now, when Issei was a baby, he developed enteritis, which is a disease of the small intestine. And to treat this, the doctors would have to inject potassium and calcium into his body. Which led to Issei eventually recovering from the illness. But the downside to this was that the disease was leaving him very frail and sickly looking. You know, him look sicky sicky. Like if you blow upon him, him drop, him drop a ground long time. And this made him feel very insecure. It was said because of this, Ise was more of an introvert. He was a bit of a loner in school. He really didn't have any friends, but he absolutely loved school. Especially, uh, especially, why me keep on I say especially? Especially, I'm sorry dumplings. Especially, ugh, especially literature. No, I'm explaining this to no. You know, sometimes you don't want to go to school, but your favorite subject are fall upon the day day and you push yourself to go. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was guidance, HFLE, um, what else? I did really love literature to and language. One of them subject there. So, and one of them case there. You know, say your favorite subject a land pan the day there. So, you push yourself for go to school. I said that. Because you say they love school. Especially literature. But I just say. Alright. Back to the story. So, he loved literature. Because it was a way for him to escape the world that he was in. And go on like these grand adventures in his imagination. You know? As a little pitney, we imagine everything. We imagine ourselves being reindeer, cow, a jump over moon, Barbie, um, transformer. We imagine ourselves being all kind of things. So, it basically I say, he say love literature because him can use him imagination. Remember, I'm small and sicky sicky, and him look off, like him look odd. Him not look normal, like. A normal person would so him using imagination and you know him be the hero theme story them good job he say anyways back to the story so he loved reading he loved books stories because of this he would end up getting his master's degree in english literature he say would say that from a young age he noticed that Something was off about him. Like something was going on. Something was different. He say in a later interview would say that when growing up, his uncle would come over to the house and they would play a game where like his uncle would dress up in a scary boy eating giant. His uncle dress up like a scary boy eating giant. And he would chase the kids around the house pretending he was going to put them in a big pot and cook them and then eat them. 
yeah, you know, kids. Rena Pandong, I play with Uncle. Uncle, come. Ah, ah, you can't catch me. I'm going to take you out, put you in another pot, and pretend to eat you. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But, we know where the, if we know where the story I go, we we'll look at the game and say, Jesus, Savior, why you did have to do it? Why you did have to play the game though, the pitney? But, okay, wonderful game, Mr. Uncle Sir. Mm hmm Back to the story again. So the uncle would chase Ise and his brother around the house, right? And then his father would rescue them. And this was all fun and games. Like, no bad shenanigans was going on. But Ise would say that this game, it was more than just a game. Mm -hmm. He said that he remembered to have a mixture of terror and excitement while playing this game. Ise would say that this was when... He really became fascinated with stories and fairy tales about monsters and dragons, especially when they involve eating people. So he said Ansel and Gretel was one of his favorite stories. Now, honestly, I don't remember Ansel and Gretel. I remember um, something about a candy house, but then did eat them? Then did eat Ansel and Gretel? So that they did have a read as Pitney? Wow. Wow. <laughs> now, Easy and his brother said that they grew up in a very tame home, a very loving home, a very normal home. One thing though, the family never talked about, I can't say it, I can't say it from YouTube. Six, but changed the I to E. The family never talked about that. It was just something no one talked about, okay? Like, if you ever talk about it, then I'm going to look for you. But they are kicking out of the house. You just, you just not to talk about it. Don't mention the word in the family. And then all right. So, this thing happened to EC, right? He got his first boner. Mm hmm EC, little, little diggle, diggle, diggle. Stand up on him strong. No. Remember, nobody not teach him nothing about this. He don't know what to do. Him literally think him sick. So him see it and I said, Jesus Christ, I'm sick. I need to go to the hospital. Something wrong. Bumba. What is, what, what is, what is this? Why it's stand up? Why it's not going down? <laughs> Basically. And again, no one taught him about this. He thought he was sick. So he has his thing up. Yeah, so he has this thing up and he's feeling these weird feelings. And Ise said this led him into participating in some very questionable acts. For example, having the family dog lick his, you know, his thing. From you up in a chichi man yard. Give we fire, make we burn them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, he said of the dog, I lick him thing. All right. He say said that when this happened, his sexual desires started to become more distorted. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, have the, you sit down there, you have the dog. Uh. You know what? We're not going to get into that. So as Ise got older, he only gets weirder. In first grade, he said that he saw something that really put a smile on his face. He found one of his classmates very attractive. So his fellow classmate is wearing shorts because, you know, it's P.E. I normally wear shorts go P.E. or mini skirt. And he's remembering that he was looking at the girl and thinking to himself, Wow, look at that tie. I would love to take a bite. Now remember, he says in first grade, that means he's like six or seven years old. So something definitely wrong with this pitney or so. Sitting wrong with him. Anyways, as time went on, Issei was growing more and more aware of his fantasies of eating ties and how it just wasn't normal because... It's not. And at the age of 15, he did try to seek help from a psychologist. But when he found out that he needed to go in person and that it was serious, so he really needed help, he never went. I don't know, but I guess he couldn't bring himself to face the reality or to tell his parents. So he just never said anything about it and he never went to therapy. 
His parents never came out and say anything on record about their son, so it's unclear if they knew what was going on in his head or if they even knew that he needed help. You understand? Like, many things them know or we don't know. So, it's 1964 and Issei is 24 years old. At this time, he's studying at the University of Tokyo when he sees a tall, beautiful German woman. She was just, you know, walking and he was just feeling attracted to her. So, you know, a normal boy would say, Bumba, she pretty, man. I want get for noir. You know, like, I want get for noir, the girly. But, mm -mm, not easy. As you probably know, Issei isn't a normal person. So instead of thinking to himself like, how can I get to know her? You know, like, oh, I can get her. Oh, I can get to talk to her. Issei was thinking how to get close to her so he could eat her. And this actually is scary because just imagine you can, you, you just a walk, you just a go about your business and somebody a look on your prey of eat you. So this just scary for think about honestly. So one summer, he decides to lean into his dark feelings, those dark desires that he was having. So he was following this girl, the same German girl. Mm -hmm. He must follow her around, around the place, you know, like he must stalk her, basically. I guess he would see her from time to time, like taking the train, you know. So he decides to just follow her home one night. So he's waiting outside of her apartment and he's waiting to see her lights go off. And once he knew that this woman had gone to bed, he decides to break in through her window. So you know him climb up and thing and thing. He see when him reach, he sees that she was laying on the bed, sleeping naked. So he says start feel pump up knowing her. Him ready. He said that he didn't want to kill her. He just wanted to take a bite out of her bottom. Like him just didn't want to bite out a clump of flesh out her bottom. And <laughs> me I laugh because wow, he say she I go feel it after her body no numb. She, she I go feel it. There's no way somebody can lay down and you bite out them flesh and them no feel it, yo. She, she I go feel it. You're so smart. Anyways, continue the story. He's looking for something heavy around to knock this woman out with, right? And the first thing he sees, an umbrella. Mm-hmm. Must say it, one umbrella. He says to the umbrella and take it up and think it's going to knock her out. Anyways, so he grabs the umbrella, goes up to her bed, and you know, like, him a lean over for, like, lick her with it and knock her out. And I guess him accidentally brush against her because she wake up and, you know, the woman wake up and start scream like anyone would. No, remember, Issa is very, very small. For real, like, five, no, like, four foot something. Yeah, like, four foot something. Because... Anyone over five foot two can easily take him down. And that's what she did. She grabbed his arm, she threw him on the ground, and then she called the police. Wonderful. We need for clap big earlier. So the woman called the police, right? And Issei was arrested. And he was being charged with attempted rape. But if the police them did ever know him really want to do. Okay. So remember, I mentioned earlier that Issei's father was wealthy, like super wealthy. And when he found out that his son was in trouble, he pays a large unknown settlement to the victim. And the charges end up being dropped. Now, this experience never teach Issei nothing. You know, sometimes in life you go through some something or some something reach and you say, I'm going to learn from that I'm going to go back there, so This not teach Issei nothing. Issei... This not teach him nothing. I could just leave it at the fact say this not teach him nothing. So after that fail attempt, he says desire didn't just go away. In fact, they just got stronger. He knew he had to eat a woman. Mm -hmm. So he say ended up going on a vacation, right? He goes on a cruise to Greece, and while while he is in this cruise, he met a butcher. What am I stuttering? Huh? Sorry. May I go say that over because I realize I've been a stutter. Issei went on a vacation and 
when he was on this cruise going to Greece, he met a butcher and he was super interested in talking to this guy. So, you know, him go up to the butcher, ask the butcher, like, oh, you cut up meat? Oh, you cut it up? You have a specific technique here for you use or you just cut it? What kind of knife you use? You know, him just go up to the butcher, ask him random question. And the butcher, you know, the butcher feel nice in himself, like somebody actually interested in my work. So the butcher just did here at tell him things. Him just uh, explain things to him. And him just did here have a full conversation. But he say secretly was taking notes and how to cut up a human being. Mm -hmm. Now, I know if the butcher did really know why he say ask them question here. He would have run him and tell him no. Like, move from it. So do off. Move. The one who come tell you things for you cut up people with. Move! I'm not, not tell you nothing. Excuse yourself. Oh, Tada. But the butcher never know. And then he say, even wrote a letter to this butcher later down telling him thanks. Like, thank you for teaching me how to. Well, he never say, teach him how to cut up human being because the butcher did really teach him how to cut up um, meat. You know, cow, goat, and all of that. And he say apply the technique to actual human. So he write the butcher a letter, tell the butcher thanks. And this letter was after people find out say he say a cannibal. So the butcher, Jesus God, the butcher goodly said to himself, but the same short man here did I ask me oh for cut up things. Same so really take what I tell him and go and cut up people. Eh? If me had a butcher there. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, back to the story. So then in 1981, he say he graduates from college and ends up moving to France to pursue a PhD in comparative literature at Sorbonne University, which is a very fancy university. We heard. Ear say. We're not sure that we hear. So when he moves, he moves to a, to a Latin quarter of Paris. France, an area which is super known for its student life. It's very lively, lots of people, etc, etc. He say is kind of getting adjusted to this new life of his. And he would say that every night, well, almost every night, he would go out and he would bring in sex workers back home with him. And instead of paying them, you know, instead of paying the girl them when they finish, he would wait for the moment when they, you know, like, them back turn, them not look on him. He, he would wait for that moment and then he would try to shoot them. He was trying to kill someone, but luckily he would always freeze because he didn't have the guts to do it. But... He was still trying to practice. He never have the God to do it. But he still had practice. Because he want to kill somebody. We learn that. We know that. So time goes on. And in one of his classes. He meets a woman named Renee. And immediately he falls in love with Renee. Love at first sight. Renee Harvelt was 25 years old and she was also studying to get her PhD in French literature. She was originally from Holland and it was said that Renee was like 5 foot 10. She was just tall, stunning, super smart and she spoke three languages. You know, the jackpot that you know, she have everything so again he say meets renee in one of his classes and he's being friendly and he says to her that he's looking for someone to help him study german because he's really struggling lie 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 matter lie the boy at tell run him a lie matter we all know a lie matter so he asked her if she could teach him and then he told her that he had a very a very sorry a very wealthy father who could pay for her time if she helped him, you know? So, I tell her, I say, my father rich, riches. Can pay you if you help me because I'm really a struggle. Alright, so that was the plan. That wasn't no plan. That him do. So, yeah, that him do. That him tell the girl. 
So my dumplings, this is where I'm going to end for today. If you want your part 2, click the subscribe button, turn on the post notification bell so YouTube can tell you when I upload again. The madness not start. If not start, do the madness did. If not start, do the good things did. We all know my cannibal. So with that being said, we know what I'm going to do. If not start, that it. I'm going to talk about all of that in a part 2. If you don't want to miss that, turn on the post notification bell and subscribe. Again, thank you guys again for hanging out with me today. Mwah. See you in part 2.